High Country Adventures, presented this week by Creative Printing and Internet Services. Appalachian Enterprise Center, helping businesses reach new heights. Suga Canopies, where there's sun, there's Suga. Black Apparita, healthy fast food. River and Earth Adventures, raftcavehike.com. Blowing Rock Ale, a beer drinker's pleasure. Foot Slogger, your outdoor gear provider for 35 years. Reed's Cafe and Catering, who knew lunch could be this good? And Misty Mountain Threadworks, crash mats and harnesses made locally. Welcome back to High Country Adventures. Imagine being a hang glider in the 70s at Howard's Knob and jumping off of that. Well, that's exactly what Bubba Goodman and the boys used to do. We go next to Tater Hill for an exclusive interview with Bubba to talk about the early days of flying and how it's evolved. Stay with us. Yeah, Howard's Knob, we actually used a, uh, before we built the ramp, we put uh, a 2x6 over two rocks and we ran off the two by six mm -hmm. and fall off and we had to pick it back up and uh -huh. run off again <laughs> and then and then we built a ramp up there eventually uh-huh which worked out real good and what shut that down just by the, the, the town the town so, well, the town actually said that um they were worried about the liability of spectators falling off the ramp uh-huh so we got together with him and was trying to come up with a ramp that we could use mm -hmm. and a fence that we could use that maybe would fall mm -hmm. and become a ramp mm -hmm. to keep mm -hmm. people from doing it Wow. And we went up there one day and they put the fence up. And it's like, oh, I guess that's, uh, that's that. That's that. So we renegated it once after that where we uh -huh. just put gliders over the fence and flew. Uh -huh. And then after the all that stuff got developed down there, Nowhere to land. it was like, yeah, we might as well give it up. Yeah. But that was a beautiful place to fly. I bet. It really was fun. Huh. And um, then we move on to this area, this locale. Yeah, this has always been here. This was actually uh -huh. one of the early, early sites. Uh -huh. um, probably... I don't know if it was earlier than Grandfather or not, but right around the same time frame when Grandfather was, was mm -hmm. good. And this is areas not quite as windy as Grandfather, so when it would blow hard, everybody would come over here to fly. So, oh. So in the Haiti of Grandfather, mm -hmm. um, this place was loaded up too on the weekends. Uh huh. And uh, was paragliding kind of a, a newer development than, than hang gliding? Yeah, but yeah, by far. It's only been around in this area probably 15 or so years where mm -hmm. Sangland's been around for more than 30, 35 years, mm -hmm. 75 I think. Mm -hmm. I remember the first guy that came up was like 90, 93 or 94, the uh -huh. three paragliders up here for the first time, uh -huh. so somewhere in there. The one great step for mankind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah, giant leap of faith. They were doing it out west and uh, finally somebody came up Yeah. and this, this hill is just ideal for flying paragliders. Seems like it. And the contest has been going how long? This is our fourth one. Fourth one. Yep, fourth one. And just a quick overview of the objectives and what, what makes it a contest, what they're, mm -hmm. what they're looking to do. We, every day is a different day uh, mm -hmm. weather-wise, so we try to optimize the, the weather for the day. Mm -hmm. And we'll do um, a race around a course, and depending on the conditions where the course is, they're called waypoints, and we'll fly from launch to a waypoint that may be as far away as, like today, we had one that was about two miles away, and then another one you'd backtrack three miles away and go back to another one that was two miles away and then to a goal. Mm -hmm. And um, other days we'll fly a straight line distance, say, even as far away as North Wilkesboro. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends on the day that we do it. And the GPS that we fly with records all the mm -hmm. our flight log. And so you, you basically have a course setter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you? there's three of us, okay. uh, three or four of us in the mornings that just kind of get together. get together and they're more the advanced pilots. Mm -hmm. um, there's mm -hmm. a couple of the advanced guys who are really good and a couple of local people who kind of know the weather. Mm -hmm. And we get together and try to brainstorm and get a, a good task for that day. Write the set list and go, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep, and everybody downloads the, uh, or puts them into their little GPS that they have and uh -huh. they're ready to go fly a task. And then we just wait for the, for the weather to get good. Mm -hmm. So it's basically all about accomplishing tasks. It is, yeah. yeah. And in this particular format that we're using here, we've got a handicap system. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of there's some good pilots here, but a lot of um, beginner intermediate pilots. Mm -hmm. and so our goal is to have them have a chance to win the comp. And we kind of give nice. instruction up here. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few guys um, like Kerry Castle we brought in from from Bishop California, who's a world champion, um, female paraglider pilot, hang glider pilot. 
Mm. She's been doing clinics all week. Mm -hmm. So it, we're trying to educate people on flying. Yeah. And it's, it's been working out really well. Wow. All right. Sounds like a pretty cool sport. It's a lot of fun. It really is a lot it of fun. It sounds awesome. Thanks a lot, Bubba. You're welcome. Thank you.